More than a month and a half into the nation's vaccination rollout, roughly one in three Americans still say that they probably won't get the shot. This is according to a poll from the Associated Press in which many people express doubts about safety and effectiveness. Now, among those waiting for more research, a former waitress from Brooklyn who says that her uncertainty cost her her job. Tonight, she explained her reasoning to News 4's Jackie Beckford in a story you'll see only on 4. Now, to be clear, Bonnie Jacobson says she is not an anti-vaxxer. She believes in the vaccine, but that she's trying to have a child. It's been delayed for a year now because of the pandemic, and she's worried that getting the vaccine could delay her hopes of having children even longer. They are planning on starting to try to have children in August. But when she got laid off, those plans were put on hold. So when her current employer, Red Hook Tavern, asked her a week ago if she planned to get the vaccine now extended to restaurant workers. I do have my reservations about it. Um, just like, you know, I need to talk to a doctor and just see how I feel. Jacobson, a waitress, says she was initially told it wasn't mandatory, but the restaurant changed course, telling her in an email Monday they respected her decision, but we have implemented this policy to maintain a safe working environment and that getting the vaccine is required. At this time, your employment will be terminated. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> really? Like, I just worked for you through a pandemic. But Jacobson's firing appears to be legal. Companies can fire you for not getting the vaccine. This particular subject is a really hot topic right now. I haven't heard of a company taking that extreme step. Employment attorney Felicia Ennis says the EEO makes it clear termination should be a last resort. Before you terminate anybody, you have to really be able to show why that particular person is going to pose a significant or they call it a direct threat. According to the CDC, the vaccine is generally viewed as safe, but the agency says getting vaccinated is a personal choice for people who are pregnant and that the actual risks of mRNA vaccines to the pregnant person and her fetus are unknown because these vaccines have not been studied in pregnant women. It's already been postponed. I would hate for something to happen and we get the vaccine and then have to hold off a few more years. We reached out to Red Hook Tavern. The owner recovering from surgery told us he had nothing to say tonight, but would be happy to speak with us Wednesday. I'm not out for a big lawsuit. I'm not out for money. Um, just also want to make that clear. It's just I think it's an important story. And Jacobson says this is not about getting her job back. She no longer wants to work here, she says, after being let go. In Red Hook, Chucky Beckford, News 4, New York. The British government has said it will provide vaccine passports for its citizens if they're required to, in order to travel abroad, but that it won't make proof of vaccination part of its domestic agenda. Some companies are looking into making the shots mandatory for their employees, a controversial stance that could flout rules against discrimination. Yenna Lee explains. Vaccine passports to travel abroad, but not to go down to your local pub. This is how the UK government sees its way out of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're not looking at uh, the domestic use of uh, vaccine passports. That's not in our planning. As I said, as the Prime Minister described, it'll be the national vaccination programme combined with rapid testing uh, that I think is the way forward. Zahawi admitted, though, that private businesses could very well demand proof of vaccination from employees. One nationwide care home operator and a London-based plumbing company have already publicly announced no jab, no job policies. But employment lawyers are divided over the legality of such strategies. On the one hand, management could argue vaccines ensure workplace safety. On the other, it could be seen as discriminatory. Most of all, employers would be asking sensitive medical information from their employees. Meanwhile, major trade organization CBI says the focus should be on workplace testing instead. Workplace testing is gaining momentum, but far more firms need to be encouraged. That's where the business focus is right now, rather than clamoring for the introduction of a domestic vaccine passport. So far, more than 15 million people have received their first dose in the UK, a relatively successful campaign that has boosted employers' confidence. Recruitment company Adzuna saw a 16% jump in new job postings between the first and last weeks of January. So how significant are those changes that are, that are announced today?
Yes, well, good morning, Peter. They are certainly significant changes. So significant, in fact, I took the opportunity whilst I was talking to you to come here and get my first dose of the Pfizer vaccine myself because as of the beginning of this month, the vaccine has become open to anyone over the age of 16. Now, this vaccine rollout in, in Israel has been going on since December, and that, but now it has only just become open to anyone in the public over the age of 16. So the news that has happened today has come out a little bit earlier than we had expected, because uh, what we had expected is that after 5 million people in the country had received their second dose, that life would be returning back to normal. But the Cabinet has just announced today that for anyone who receives the two doses of the Pfizer vaccine will be able to be allowed to go in as of this Sunday into gyms, bars, restaurants, sporting events or any form of cultural centre, including museums. They will now be open to anyone who has got two doses of the vaccine. This allows them to have what is being called a green passport, which also means that they are able to go overseas and come back and not have to go into that mandatory quarantine as well. So this is certainly extremely exciting news for the people here in Israel and is certainly a big incentive to get people down and get people coming here and getting their vaccines now, now that they are available to everyone in the country. Peter.